previously. But there's about 25 thousandths worth of play up and down. And what I think is happening is that uh, cutter is just hopping on the part and that's creating the chatter. And once it starts, you know, then it just goes. So I think the solution here is to replace those bearings. I'm going to pull the shaft apart see what's in here. I don't know what these bearings look like. I did not pull them out, so they're the 80 year old original bearings. So I'm going to see what's in there, but I'm going to save that for another video. I will admit, I got to walk away from this thing for a while. So, so this is the shaft out of the Walker Turner drill press. I've pressed it out and removed it from the quill assembly. I want to replace the original SKF roller bearings with some angular contact bearings. The OD of this shaft is 15.7 millimeters and the ID of the housing is 35. They don't make an angular contact bearing that will directly fit this shaft and that housing. A 35 millimeter OD bearing comes in either a 17 or 15 millimeter ID. Now since the OD of this shaft is greater than 15, I could conceivably turn the whole thing down to 15 millimeters and use the 15 by 35. I don't want to do that though because I don't want to remove material from the drive side. So instead, I opted to go with the 35 by 17. I found some DOM tubing that's really close. It measures 16 millimeters ID. So my plan here is to open this up slightly and press it onto the shaft and then use my lathe to turn the OD of this down to 17 millimeters and press these bearings on. Now there's not a lot of material on this once it's turned down. It's only about 1.75 millimeters in diameter difference, so that's what, 0.8 millimeters? Super tiny, but I think it'll work. So I'm gonna cut this to length, and then I'm gonna heat it up, and we're gonna press it onto this shaft. my press was a little tighter than I meant for it to be. I made it on about that far and then the force to push it any further was bowing the shaft and I was worried about bending it. I couldn't come up with a way to hold this so I could push it back off so I ended up splitting with my Dremel. I think what I learned there is this is just too long to try and press on here at least given the tolerances between the two, the clearances between the two. So I've got the damaged piece of stock in here. This is the one I just cut into a slit. I'm going to use a lathe and I'm going to cut two pieces to one and a half inches long. Those then will be used to carry the bearings and they'll be a lot shorter so I think they'll be a lot easier to press on. So I'm going to cut two to that length and then I'm going to lightly bore them to give me a little more clearance when I press. Let's do it again. Alright, there we go. I've tapped the bottom one on and I'm ready to press it in place. What I've done is I've made some that are slightly oversized so that I can use these to push them on. So these will push on and then I'll be able to slide them back off. I think we're ready to actually turn this thing down. 
Let's go over, we'll put it in the lathe, and we'll start to take it down to diameter. So here's how the shaft turned out. I sized it so that the top is a sliding fit and the bottom is a press fit. These bearings, the angular contact bearings, need to be preloaded. So I can press the bottom on and then the top, what I'll do is I'll thread the top portion of this and then when the bearing is on, I can thread a nut onto there and preload these bearings. And there's not a lot of material there, so I went with a really fine thread 1116-24. I had to order a tap and a die because I couldn't find nuts in that size either. So my plan here is to cut the threads on this and then make two jam nuts that will thread in here and provide the preload. I'm going to press this upper bushing in place before I do the threading. I want to see how it fits. Alright, so I got the lower one pressed on there. I think that looks okay. I want to put it together just temporarily. So I got the bearings pressed in, everything's kind of put together. I don't have this threaded yet, so it's not preloaded. So there is some movement in those bearings. But once I get this threaded and once I get this preloaded and pulled up, I think it's going to work really well. So I hit a snag. This is that, that die I had ordered, it's 11 16 24. It was the closest one I could find to the dimensions I had to work with. Unfortunately, when it's on there, it's pretty much the same diameter as the shaft. So if I were to cut this, it would just cut threads that would pull right off. There would be nothing left. There would be no strength in those threads. So that approach is not going to work. So I've got to come up with another way to preload this. So I had a couple of ideas. One, I thought maybe I could cut a snap ring groove and then use a wave washer. That snap ring would provide a thrust surface for that washer and it would provide the preload. The other, I thought maybe I could thread the inside of the housing and instead of providing the preload on the inner edge of the bearing, I could provide the preload on the outer edge of the bearing. The way they had preloaded the original bearings is with this collar. And so I'm going to use this collar for the time being until I can come up with come up with a better way to do this. So this is back together. I mean those bearings feel pretty good. Let's take it back, let's put it on the, the mill, let's see how it works. This is an aluminum V-block. I use it for all sorts of things. I recently used it to hold a piece of a, a shock absorber together and I pretty much destroyed it. So a good test, I think, or maybe just a good project to start with is I want to clean up this V-block. I want to cut this a little deeper. I'm going to mount it in the vise, 45 degrees, and then we'll use a carbide cutter here and we'll just make passes and square this up. I've got the RPM set at 1000, usually I run it at about 1700, so I found that, I don't know, for some reason carbide with aluminum likes to be run a little more slowly. Well, that looks all right. Here, I'll pull it out and show you in a minute. I want to take it a little bit deeper just to get the other edges here where, where it was really compressed. I'm 
I'm gonna speed it up a little bit too. And that's how that looks. Well, you can see that all right. So what I did is I actually bought another one. This one is not as nearly nice a shape and it actually came with bearings that were completely trashed. I put my original bearings in here. So I'm going to put this one back in and I want to show you guys the same milling but just with the old original SKF bearings. I'll do it on the other V block and we'll compare the finish on the two. Let's run that real fast, just see how it sounds. Sounds like it should. So this is the other V-block. And this is the spindle with the original roller bearings. I'm going to do exactly the same thing and I'll cut it the same speeds, 1000 RPM and then we'll speed it up a little bit close to the end and see what it does. I'm not going to speed it up or put music over top of it so you guys can see it as it really is. So here's how those turned out. This one here is the one with the roller bearings and this one is with the angular contact bearings. Honestly, to my eyes, these look the same. What do you guys think? So I want these to match, so I'm going to take them back to the mill and I'm going to flatten the two faces, get rid of this where the, the material has deflected outward. And then I'm going to clamp them together and I'm going to re-mill these V's so they match. I want to talk about milling with that thing and what I think is more important than going after replacing the bearings. Some things I want to note while we're doing this. I really don't think the bearings matter much. If you've got good roller bearings, I think they're fine. A lot of the comments in my mill build video had to do with the bearings, angular contact bearings. But I put a lot of time and energy into fitting those. And in my opinion, there's no real difference in finish. Some things that are more important than bearings when you're doing this is this machine has preference. So when you're milling, it likes to mill with the bit or with the cutter on the outside. So it's running against the direction of feed, like so. If you were to mill on this side, so you're going with, it doesn't like that. It chatters. So it likes you to cut against the cutter and it also prefers the cuts be made in this direction and not in this direction. It chatters more when you cut in this direction than when you cut in this direction. So rather than replacing the bearings and trying to get rigidity that's there, the, the lesson I think is that you just have to learn to work with the machine and its, you know, its personality. So from my experience in using this, and now I've used it quite a bit as a mill, is securing the workpiece and paying attention to how I mill the workpiece or mill the part is monumentally more important than what bearings are in the spindle. So now that I've said that, and I'm sure the comments section is going to have a lot to say about it, let's put this in the vise and let's get it milled.
so that's how those turned out. This is the kind of thing that that drill press mill is good for, you know. This is something that would be difficult to do with like a belt sander or, you know, some other tool, a Dremel. I don't know what else you'd use to do this, but having a drill press mill for things like this is perfect. And you wouldn't want a larger mill for this sort of thing anyway. You know, a lot of the things around the home shop are simple things like this. So I'm really happy with how those turned out. So I've been buying up spindles, Walker Turner spindles, when I see them on eBay. This is the one that you just saw me modify. This is the one with the angular contact bearings. This one is from the later 900 series, the one that's marked 944. It does not have provisions for preload. So its preload is simply maintained by pushing down this lock collar and locking it with some set screws. I've got the first older one I bought in the machine now. That one did not include provision for preload. It had the locking collar, but that's all. I couldn't figure out why it was there. So I bought a second one of the earlier spindles. It came today, and I pulled it apart, and it had a spacer inside. And I had thought maybe this was missing from that, that first one, that first older one I bought. But what happens here is that spacer contacts the inner race on the bearings. And then when you insert that lock nut on the bearing and you tighten it down, it compresses the outer shell or the outside race. And that's how it gets bearing preload. If you get one of these, make sure you've got the spacer and the lock collar. So this, this spindle that came today, somebody has replaced the bearings on it. And the bearings that were in it are 6202Z. So these are 5.8 ID with a 35 millimeter OD. So these bearings work with the older spindle. So they work with the spindle that's not cut, that has the preload. If you do happen to have one of the newer 944s, those won't work. So if you do a bunch of Google searching and you find out these bearings will work and you buy them, they don't. They fit on there too loosely and they slide around. I don't know if you can see that slop there, but they won't work with the newer spindle. So where I'm going with this is, if you're going to go down this path and you're going to use a Walker Turner 900, do your best to find one with the older preloadable spindles. So some things I learned while I did this, I think probably the biggest is, if you put together a drill press, you convert it into a mill, take some time, mill different materials, try different tooling, and understand where its strengths and its weaknesses are. And then after you've done that, look at it and decide if things like modifying the spindle, changing out the bearings are worthwhile. I would say in my case, they really weren't. Uh, I spent a lot of time, a lot of energy, and actually quite a bit of money doing that conversion. And doing it back to back, I really saw no benefit there. In all honesty, my preference is for the old, original roller bearings. I feel like the machine performs better with them, and I see no performance gain in doing the upgrade to angular contact bearings. Now, your mileage may vary, right? It just depends on your individual machine and how that works. Now, if you buy a machine, you put it together, and the spindle bearings are already shot, absolutely go for the angular contact bearings. But if they're not shot, or you don't want to spend the money on those, there's nothing wrong with the old roller bearings. So if you're subscribed to my channel, I want to say thank you. I'm having a blast doing this, and it's all because of you guys. If you're not subscribed to my channel and you enjoyed this video, I put out content like this just about every week. If you're subscribed, then you'll know when I drop a new video. So I want to thank you guys for taking the time to watch this. So thank you. I hope you have a good day. Talk to you later.